So hello everybody at home today. Hope you're doing well. We are going to be going over our very first introduction to our new unit, which is on this page here. And we're taking some notes down from the board. And I also put some things on a PowerPoint for any of you that are struggling to follow along. So um, just a couple pieces of advice. Uh, don't fall behind on your reading. There are a lot of vocabulary words. And I say that to all of you as well, that the vocab in this unit is pretty heavy. So it's important that you stay really up to date on all of your homework and your reading. I know for your class and other classes and people at home, if you're tuning in, some people are really struggling on their virtual days, keeping up on what they should be doing, and then before you know it, you fall behind, and it gets pretty frustrating. So um, the best piece of advice I can give you is to always do the readings, and then if you are a note taker, you could, you could actually take a few notes as you're reading. Tonight's homework is 261 to 267 and that's on Canvas as well. And then also I want you guys to do this worksheet, which actually we probably will have time to do, or we might have time to start this today. And that's in your packet, automatic and effortful worksheet. It is something that we're gonna go over when you guys at home get to class tomorrow. It is not something I'm going to be grading, but I would like you guys to complete it. It looks like this. So if you guys are in class today, this is what it looks like. It's blue, it's after that red sheet. And if you're at home, this is what it looks like. I'd like you guys to give this a shot and then tomorrow I'd like to start class by going over your answers with that. Again, not graded, but I just want you guys to make sure it's a good checking for understanding. Okay, so with that being said, I know some of you are just kind of wrapping up different things with your test. Feel free to keep going and and do that i also want to point out something else in the packet this time that i haven't had in the past um, i always try to arm you guys with different ways to take notes if things aren't working for you um, just give you different ideas at least so one of the very first sheets um, in your packet looks like this but yours is empty and it's really a combination of everything you should know for the memory unit. So how I would suggest you utilize this is when we are done talking about this piece of the chapter, which will be a few days, take this out and see if you can fill it out. Like see if you can actually answer, what are the three main parts of the information processing model? And if you can do some of these things, especially from memory, then you know you're on a good track. If you are failing, I would look them up. I'd look them up in your notes. But this is what it looks like when it's completed. Another option could be you could just take a picture of mine and use it for your own personal notes too. That's okay too, I don't care. Um, I don't create this stuff so it's mine and not yours. So that's one option. On the back, it'll be the second half of the chapter which is called language. So we will be doing Actually, kind of this chapter is divided into three sections. Memory, we're gonna talk about language and how language is so diverse and different and how we think about that. And then finally, problem solving. How do we solve problems? So it's a very long chapter. If you guys can recall after this test, I told you all we are not doing an essay on this chapter, but I'm giving us some practice to keep us up to date. And those are the green sheets that you'll see in your packet. So. Periodically, I'll say, all right, let's do a practice FRQ. What do you think? Does this score or not score? Just to keep us kind of current on those skills. And last but not least, I'd like to point out the amount of vocabulary in this chapter. It's heavy. So you have two pages. So make sure that you are, if flashcards work for you, if um, outlines work for you, whatever's working for you to keep those terms very current would be best practice. So I was trying to kind of ramble on, to be honest with you, giving many of you who just finished up an opportunity to put this down. We will go through this in about three days. <laughs> 
we are going to start right here today. This is all the farther we're going to get to the green. We won't, um, what I want you to do for homework tonight is related to this. This is going to take a little bit of time, and then this baby is going to take so much time that it's going to require us a couple days of in of itself with long-term memory and what happens in our long-term memory, and then what happens when we forget, and what are the reasons why we forget. Isn't it kind of amazing? We're going to be talking about something that all of you can use in every day of your life. Regardless if you like psych or you hate psych, regardless if you want to major in it or don't ever want to take a class like this again in your entire life, we all use our memories and we all need to use our memories. So I'm hoping this one chapter will actually, you could take bits of it away and not think about the test, but take bits of it away and use it maybe in college. Like what are some practices that I can do that are beneficial for me when I need to study? Maybe it's not college, but maybe it's your workforce. Maybe it's, you know, when you're actually working, well, what are the things that I need to do? So just kind of giving you guys a moment to fill some of this out. Um, I would like you, in just a second, I'm going to have you stop, but this is going to be up for days. This will be up all week, okay? So if you are struggling to like fill this out or understand what I'm saying, again, I will clear, clean it up for you. And at home, I know you can't see this, but you will be able to when you guys come in tomorrow. Yeah, do you not have a red one? I don't have a red one. You're, are you incomplete? Is your packet incomplete? Does everybody else have one? Gosh, I hope. There's a red one. It does feel a little thin, doesn't it? You must have done something, Christian. <laughs> Let's get started before you guys all get engrossed and just copying this. We're going to do some memory things. So what better way to do memory things than play some memory games? This isn't necessarily a game, but I'm going to ask you a particular question. I have removed something in the front of the room that has been here since the very first day of school. Now, Chad is our only lovely new student that would not have that advantage. But all of you have been here almost every single day. Isn't it so interesting? That side of the room a little bit more than this side. You guys for sure you know? What's your scale of 1 to 10? How sure you are that you know? What do you mean? I moved I moved some I removed I removed something. It's no longer in the front of the room. I didn't just put it in a different spot. God, this is rare. This is so rare. I most times Kids are like, I have no idea. You have so much shit in this room, I can't figure it out. <laughs> well, can you give us a hint, Miss Joel? Uh, poster. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, not not the that's not what I was talking about. And the reason, yes, that poster is gone, but that poster was gone due to self-actualization. Last night before I left to go home, I removed something in the front of the room. I was wondering why you all thought you knew right away. It seemed weird. Now all the hands are back down. It seems like that's different. Yeah. What? I just was like, I feel like there was something else on there. Nope. Nope. Okay, you, every day you come in this room, you look at the front of the room. You see the front of the room. You need to shame us. I am shaming you because it's going to tie exactly into what we're talking about. It was on this side of the room. So that's why I thought at first you guys raised your hand, many of you, like, oh, I think I know. So even people at home, if you're looking on this side of the room, maybe you could see what I removed. Christian. No, that was taken off because of self-actualization. Is nothing with this bulletin board. Stop focusing on the bulletin board. Yes. You still have an Ollivander's one. I did! Oh my god, I can't believe you did it! What? It was an A Harry Potter wand. What? I never even saw that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh huh. From the actual store, because I'm such a geek. Hey, I actually have one of those. I have one of those. Do you? And I made my husband get me one because he went. And I'm like, you got to bring me a wand back. He's like, what are you going to do with it? I'm like, I don't know. I just want a wand. <laughs> I cannot believe you remembered that. How many of you knew the answer before Beth said that? Did anyone? OK. How many of you remembered after she said it? How many of you had no idea that this was even here? OK, where was this? I had it, and I never touched it since the first day of school. I had it right here the whole time. And you never noticed. Why? Why did you not put it in your memory? Yes? Because it was an unnecessary memory. OK, so you're telling me you don't remember unnecessary things throughout your day? It was never pointed out to us. Like, if we never had How many times do you go through your day and things are not pointed out to you and you're like, why the hell do I remember that? I remember that. So stupid. Yes? Yes? I don't buy it. Yes? I have one more to remember. Then a wand. Yes? The wand didn't have any importance to me. I wouldn't have known that that box was a wand. From Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why did you remember it? Uh, Are you a Harry Potter fan? Yeah, I remember. I've always been one to ask to see it. So. Got it. I love that fan. Got it. If you were not a Harry Potter fan, if oh. nothing of that was ever meaningful to you at all as a child, it probably wouldn't have. You probably didn't encode it, is what I'm talking about. If we don't encode things, we won't remember them. So next time your parents tell you to do something and you say, oh crap, I forgot. Or your teacher says, where's your homework? And you're like, I forgot. Here's what you can say instead. You can say, I did not encode that. So now you'll sound really smart. I just didn't encode it, mom. I didn't encode it, Mrs. Weirs. I'm sorry. See what they say in your follow-up. Let's do another one. I need one person from this side of the room and one person from this side of the room. All right, thank you. And Gabe. All right. You guys, all they're going to do, Christian, you're going to stand here in this corner. I'm going to put them like this. Take them out if you don't mind. You're going to stand in this corner. You can take those out. And they are just one at a time going to go through the pictures to you guys to look at. You are not writing anything down. Your job, try to remember them. The first time you're um, Know all of the pictures. When he's done with those, oh. he's going to show these. Then I'm going to give him two more stacks, and he's going to go to that corner, and you're going to go to this corner. Make sense? OK, nobody's talking. Or I don't care if you talk, but yeah, you can go first. Can you guys see? Go ahead, Gabe. And you can just set them down. You don't have to put them back in because you're going to show them again. And then that'll be up behind Maria. <laughs> Cape struggling. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Back that corner. Christian? Can everybody see him? You 
and set them down. Gabe? A little higher, Gabe. Yeah, just so everybody can see it. Good. All right. The two of you just sit tight for a second. Everybody else, scrap paper. I'm be using lots of scrap paper. It's not going to be turned in, so wherever you want to write this. You guys can take a seat for a second. I am going to show you one of the pictures. You're going to say Gabe front, Gabe window. Are you following me? Christian front, Christian door. You can you can abbreviate. You can see you can say gay G F Gabe G F G W Chris. Okay, yeah. Ready? Don't say anything. You guys don't have to do it. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. How we doing out there, guys? Willing to put some money down yet? 12 on your accuracy. 14. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Now this is where Gabe and Christian are going to come into play. If you need your sheets to answer, you guys have them ready. Ready? Check your own. Gabe, Christian, you tell us the answers. Ready? This one came from what corner, guys? Back there. Okay. This one? The pancakes. Front right. Right up here. My right. <laughs> the bridge. Over here by the lamp, the fire. Over there by the window. Was that the correct order? Was this the next one? And this is the front by Gabe. The iguana eye back there. The red shoe. Red shoe. Where was it? Gabe Front, wasn't it? A uh, purple sky. Oh, crud. I don't know. This nine? This is eight. This is eight. Purple sky goes where? 
Right here, I know. There we go. This is nine, baby. I was waiting for somebody to say, oh my God, that is so cute. 10, big bird. <laughs> 11, the rainbow. Okay, good. 12, the apple. Christian. 13, swing. 14, a weightlifter. What are we on, 15? 15, the sled. 16, ear piercing. Christian in the front. 17, the messy room. Back door. 18, the black and white sailboat. Back of the room. 19, the sand surfer. And 20, the last one, Lego man. Back at the door. Count your correct numbers, please. Again, no test. Gentlemen, if you could just put yours back in their own cases, that would be great. All right, there were 20 possibilities. Did anybody get all 20? 18 or 19? You got all 20, Allison? Dang, that does not usually happen. Seth? Okay, just wait. I'm going to hold you. Seth, how many did you get? You got 19. What about you guys? 19. 19. 18. 18. Chad? Okay, and that would be it. All right, the two of you, did you have a hard time or easy time remembering because you held them? Uh, I'm not going to lie, I forgot a couple I had. You did forget a couple. How about you? Well, I didn't really look at the ones I had over here, but yeah. I couldn't remember. Yeah, as you were doing more of the holding. Okay, guys, let's chat a little bit about those of us who remembered a lot. The average is usually about 12. So you guys, again, first hour is doing pretty well. Allison, you started to say how you start to remember things, and I'd like the rest of you to chime in. What enabled you to remember all of them? I associate things really strange in my head. Okay, give like, us some examples. Like when I saw the fiery thing, I immediately thought of Hades, but worse, from like the movie Hercules. And then whenever I was the black and I go to the door, I remember thinking, oh wait, they're not going to see that on the camera. And so I just remembered that from being over there. And I was just kind of dumb stuff like that. I didn't realize that that was a red shoe. I just thought it was a really weird looking figure. And so I just remembered that. Okay, okay. So you associate by thinking of something else. Give me something else. What stood out? How'd you remember? Well, Beth? I thought a lot about my family. Like that pierced ear looked like my sister's ear. And the baby reminded me of my nephew. Or I just, I kind of thought about stuff that was relevant to my life. Like the fiery dude, we're reading Dante's Inferno right now in the lid. Perfect. Perfect. Anybody else associate it with your life personally? Okay, kind of. Did, how else did the rest of you remember this stuff? So we have the association to my life, weird associations. Seth? Well, associations with popular concepts, I guess. Popular what? Concepts, I Like, give me one example. Like the guy was kind of fire, I just thought it was safe. Got it, got it. How about you, Carter? I don't know, I just... Thought really hard and remembered it. I thought very hard, Miss Horner. I was not going to forget. How about you, Jackson? I feel like some of the stuff can repeat. So, like, it was like surfing on the sand dunes, and then over there was slitting. Ah. Uh, um, okay, keep going with this idea. Someone in the front left had, like, the flaming head, and then back there again, you had someone on fire. Okay. It was just stuff like that. It kind of repeated. Okay. Of what oh, interesting. So sometimes, what do you think I was getting at with him? He didn't quite hit on it, but sometimes I have students say that this is how they remembered it. Story. They do. I, I have kids will say, okay, the shoe was worn by the guy, and then he fell, and he got on fire, and that, you know, like they just make these crazy stories, and somehow they are able to connect it and remember it. Your memory is so interesting and what we can remember and can't remember. 
And how many of us have been in situations where you're like, oh my God, I'm so frustrated that I cannot remember just a simple thing like somebody's name, you know, or, you know, just stupid, really, or you honestly were told something and you're like, I have no memory of that. Are you sure you said this to me? My husband and I are playing a lot of those games lately. Like, are you serious? Like you really say, I think I'm losing my mind type of thing. Might have something to do with what? Or the age. The age is always what I'm going to go with. So let's chat for the next five minutes. I do still think I have a bump on my head, by the way, from that bar. Um, about the information processing model, you guys. And what we just did here, we'll do a lot of these throughout the course of the next few days where we'll test our memories just a little bit and see how well we can recall. Some of you have the craziest memory where you can remember stuff that makes no sense. It doesn't, it's not relevant to anything, but then the stuff that's important, you really, really struggle remembering. My husband, you're gonna hear lots of stories about the lack of memory we are having. His big thing is, where are my keys? Where are my keys? Did you look for your keys? They're right there. I can see them from here. Oh God, how many of you are very dependent on maybe someone in your home to say, where is this? where are my shoes? Where are this? Where is this? And then where's my cell phone? How many times a day have you ever lost your cell phone? That's the one thing that I struggle holding on to consistently and super frustrating. So this whole model is called the information processing model. It was actually developed by the two men on that red sheet that you guys have in front of you there that I that's typed up for you. In fact, the Atkinson and Schifrin information processing model. And so I would encourage you not only to maybe write down what I have on the board, but any side notes that make it make more sense or highlight things or circle things that are really, really important. So first comes into our brain, what the, the first thing that comes into our brain is an external stimulus. So you're either hearing something or you're seeing something. So these two to me are not hard to remember because I think of iconic, the word I is in it, and then echoic, if I think about like echoic hearing that maybe like an, an animal might have. That's how I always remember that. So this is my really bad drawing of an ear, and this is my better drawing of an eye. So you have this sensory input. Imagine if you could remember every single bit and piece of information that you sense throughout the day your brain would be a bazillion times on overload. I mean it, like you never forgot anything you saw or heard throughout the entire day. It was stored in your brain. It would be too much for us. So this is why this is just temporary. It is super temporary. In fact, Iconic, within a few seconds, you will forget what you saw unless you do this to it. Okay, so this is where the processing piece takes place. But think of all the thousands to millions of different things you guys see in here that we all do throughout our day, but we don't necessarily take it in and always remember it. Echoic, you're gonna remember a little bit longer. It's gonna stick a little bit longer. I drew some musical notes here. What I was trying to demonstrate to you guys here is each bit of your sound coming in has to be processed. If I'm talking on the right side of Chad's ear, over here on the right, and if I make a sound over here, it's gonna be coming into his left side of his ear. That's how it's gonna enter into his brain. It's gonna to go to the opposite. And once it does, it takes a bit of time to process what he has heard. That's why it takes a little bit longer for echoic. It'll stick a little bit longer than this, just seconds longer. At the maximum, 20 seconds or less, and you have forgotten what you saw or what you heard. But each bit gives meaning. So if you hear a song, you can relate to the, the lyrics of the song because you're putting the bits together. This is super easy. This is temporary storage. When you don't pay attention, it's gone. That's what all that means here. What we want is we want you to pay attention. When I asked you at the beginning of class today, what is something I removed from class? And only one of you could remember it. It's because of all those reasons why you were telling me. I'm like, why couldn't you remember it? You didn't pay attention to it. It had no meaning to you at all. So why would I have paid attention to the fact that you had a wand up there, right? So once you pay attention, 
it's going to go into one of these components. And this is the order. It can't go from here to long term. It has to start from sensory, what you see in here, and it goes into what's called this temporary processing unit of encoding. So that's why I said to you guys, sometimes we just don't even encode it. You know, it just, it's just something we hear, something we see. So there are two ways we encode. Automatic encoding and effortful encoding. This is what I want you guys to do for your homework. The number one person that you want to remember, and I have him circled here, is Herman Ibenhaus. He's like the Freud of psychoanalysis. He's the, he's, he's the guy for memory. He's one of the most important men. He came up with what's called effortful processing. And so here are a couple terms, serial position effect, I'm going to talk about those tomorrow, and primacy and recency. And what I want you guys to do is to remember automatically encoding is what you unconsciously, it just happens. Have you ever remembered something and you're just like, why did I remember that? I didn't try to remember that, that type of thing. Some of even those pictures that you guys were holding up here in the corners, were you trying to remember them? Yeah, because I told you to. Do you remember what I wore yesterday? You weren't in class. That's a bad example. Do you remember what you ate for breakfast yesterday? Did you try to encode that? You didn't, tr you didn't sit down and say, I'm going to remember what I ate for breakfast, right? So it just happened automatically. Think about all the things that happened in your life that you can remember that you're not really even trying to remember. That's what this one is. That's the unconscious. But the, mo the majority of what we remember, we have to put some effort into it. This you must rehearse. So. How we encode, I have it highlighted. I know you guys, it's hard for you guys to see yellow back there, but this is the, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing that you must remember. How do we encode? Number one, automatically, or two, effortfully. We either try or we don't try. I guess don't try and try would be down here. If you're trying, it must be rehearsed some way, shape, or form. When you guys were looking at those four corners, you were trying to think about ways you could remember. You were putting effort into it. So tomorrow's discussion, these three major things that we're going to talk about, what we encode, visual, acoustic, and semantic. Does you, do you guys just understand the basics of how we got there today? Sensory input comes in, and then you actually need to actually either try or not try, and it's going to naturally be remembered for you. All right, that's our day. Let's start tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in. Um, you know, we got to wrap up the test and stuff, so that always takes a, a heavy minute. Yeah. Beth, I'll be interested to see how many kiddos. Christian or Jackson, do you mind putting yeah. yours up? Thank you. Um, remember that today. Of the. I didn't know this until I left off. I didn't even know that you guys were going to be thinking of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay healthy. Stay well.